interact with, although not on, on this device here. And the live studio audience. No, not just kidding. Just kidding. It's the but, laughing in the but you, you, want, you want to be subscribed and hit the bell icon so you get notifications for when we do go live. And we're going to be talking about a SciShow video that uh, just came out today on yeah. achy joints and predicting the weather. So right now I'm going to take just a quick moment to see if I can find our stream of comments. And there's the actual live hey, video. All right. And I'm going to have to turn down the sound so that this doesn't interfere with what you guys are hearing. And it does show that we're there. Where where is the uh, the streaming comments? Can you see where it comes up on this device? Um, device, live chat. There we go. Okay, here we go. Oh, look we at that. Bianca Die, Butterfly Girl, Hi, uh, Queen B, and Pamela Shramke. All all of these people. Okay, so you guys are here live. Yeah. Sounds a little low. All right, Bianca. Oh, I it, will scream it. We will we will see if we can actually <laughs> fix that by going to the uh, audio mixer and uh, seeing if I can bump up the audio a little bit here. How's that? Actually, trying something new. This one's a... It looks like I might... Ooh, that, that's getting a little hot Check, there. check. We'll, we'll try that audio level there. So you guys tell us. Yeah. And, and of course, you guys can comment and tell us uh, what for you, you think about... You've the, got the ear, Bianca. Bianca has the ear. <laughs> All right, we also have Miranda, Lindsay Antwine. Hey, Lindsay. And Pamela and definitely a bit quiet. It's yeah, girl puppy lover. Okay, and Royal Payne saying hi, sibling. Good evening, everyone. So we do have Excellent. a good group here. And actually, the audio is probably better if I'm speaking to the camera rather than to the, the iPad. So I apologize for doing that. And hopefully, some of you have actually seen the SciShow video. I know some of you watch their videos because you have an interest in science and medicine. And, and this one about the achy joints predicting the weather, I thought, hey, I know our audience, and I know there's going to be some people that have something to say about this. So please do comment on your experience or your grandma. Or, your, or, yeah. or my patient I saw 10 minutes ago. Talking about <laughs> predicting the... Yeah. The, uh, I hope we get a rain. And, you know, <laughs> it happens. We, we hear it all the time. Okay, so here's what we have so far. We've got uh, Pamela saying the audio is much better. Elaine saying she has RA and osteoarthritis. Says, I feel pain when weather changes. There you go. Donna Lawrence, Donna from Virginia, and Elaine saying hi to everybody. Pamela says the sound is, is good. Thank you. Yeah, we are still working perfect to make this the best we can for you guys, uh, trying to make it relevant, you know, like this video that just came out from SciShow, and trying to also make it look decent and sure. sound decent, like you'd expect from a regular show on YouTube. And here's the other thing. Yeah. I'm trying to do this so that we don't get marked advertiser unfriendly. <laughs> Like we so, do. So I need to watch my language. Is that what we need to do? Because you know, because you're usually so off. Usually, yeah. I'm like a sailor. It, just saying. <laughs> now all the sailors are going to be writing. Oh, there what are go. you saying about all the us? sailing uh, advertisements? All the, all just the ICU defend. nurses. <laughs> we just defended all the oh, all the respiratory sorry. texts. No, oh. the emergency physicians. Yeah. Yeah. So how about you guys? Uh, now we did have that comment from Oh Queen Bee talking about her mother. Uh, actually has achy knees before it rains. Uh, and Pamela Schramke is telling us it's raining where she is right now. I'll, I'll put this up so you guys can actually hear me. Uh, Miranda, bad knees, feel it before it rains or snows. Elaine thinks it's a great topic. Joints hurt when it's cold. So, yeah. and, and Anita in Stockton, Anita okay. nearby, not too far away. Feel pain with the weather. Uh, that's Donna. Uh, it's your girl puppy lover. My Nana has fibromyalgia and <laughs> arteritis. Good she is... I don't know if she's joking with us or not. Fibre Maybe she's just dictating it. In the... <laughs> Queen bee, her knees get sore during curd weather. Pamela Shramke, uh, feeling weather changes and pain, i.e. osteoarthritis and RA. RA being uh, short for rheumatoid arthritis. So osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, two different forms of inflammation of joints from very different causes. One of them because your body's eating at itself with this immune system, that's RA. It happens in younger folks or it comes on in younger age. And then osteoarthritis, more as you're getting older, more of a, a wear and tear type thing, although it actually mm. is very much a genetic predisposition to it. I'm curious if uh, we, we, we watched the SciShow and we kind of looked at all re their studies and everything like that. But I'm curious if just by report, if some people f hear it or feel it more in their joints through RA or OA. Oh, um, okay. So these people just reporting they have both. A, is this more of like a rheumatoid thing or an osteo thing? Now, if you saw the size show, then a lot of the studies were not that conclusive, showing that it, it doesn't really show uh, a lot of, of change. I, I got but, the impression it was 
even more definite than that. that yeah, there, yeah, there is no correlation. Yeah. When, but you talk to people, and obviously some of you are commenting here. You hear it. Uh, I mean, people swear by this. Yes. Um, so uh, I, I'm just curious if these people who swear by it more are in the osteoarthritis category or in the rheumatoid arthritis category. Yeah. I, I, I just and, and I tend to actually believe what we saw on SciShow, and, and I'll tell you why. Because there are tons of things that patients will come and tell us uh, that just don't fit with what we have a lot of data to say otherwise. Now, sometimes it may be that the way the tests are done don't bring out uh, a small segment that our patient represents, and the patient actually is having a legitimate experience. Right. I'm sorry, patient's experience is legitimate, absolutely. But cause and effect, and what the patient links with cause and effect may not be. Uh, just because something happens before something else does not mean that one thing caused the other. Uh, so what, what's our correlation, our not causation? Correlation does not equate yeah. to causation. So this idea gets put forth that somebody's joints ache and the weather uh, changes, or the weather changes and their a a uh, joints ache, and they go, oh yeah, weather changed. I'm, I'm sore. So here's what they did in the studies. They found the people who were saying this, mm -hmm. or maybe they didn't. Maybe they just found people with arthritis, and maybe that's the problem. They didn't. Maybe they didn't select the right people for the study. Mm -hmm. But the people who were selected in many studies, apparently, if you watch the SciShow video, uh, said that, well, they, they uh, prospectively, what's prospective? Forward. A forward so study. instead of asking people, can you predict the weather with your joints? Do you get sore when the weather rains? And everybody says, well, yeah, of course. Instead of that, they said, how do you feel? And then they saw what the weather was. And what they found out from that was there was no correlation right. when they did it that way, prospectively. And that's the difference between retrospective studies trying to find these connections between things we think are connected and prospective studies where we say, well, let's find out. Without having the benefit of being able to look back and see what happened, can we actually predict right. what happens? And this is true for all sorts. Can you think of any examples where when you do a prospective study, something we thought we could see retrospectively turned out to not be there? Examples, uh, no, not right off the top of my head. But pro prospective studies are still not the highest grade of evidence that we have. Double blind, uh, randomly controlled studies are the best. It would be interesting or to see one of those. Now, would you be able to do one of those? Have somebody not know the weather, <laughs> somehow be blinded what the weather was and then see if they could predict it based on on their, whether their joints are, I don't think you could do that, but um, that would be the the best study to do. But okay, so uh, here, I don't know if it's possible. Let's take, for example, Pamela Shramke. I have <laughs> fibromyalgia, lupus, she didn't say that, I'm doing that because of. You're just making, yeah, <laughs> have you, making jokes. Have you, have you guys watched, what's the show? Uh, uh, Haters Back Off oh, with, yeah. with Miranda That's Sings. Miranda Sings. That's where that term comes from. Okay, fibromyalgia, lupus, super tumor cerebri, Raynaud, this is all one person. Oh, Raynaud's, I'm sorry, uh, OA, uh, osteoarthritis. I feel it all over. Absolutely know when the barometric pressure changes. So the way to find this out would be to have Pamela actually uh, on, say, a twice daily basis, mm. rate your pain level zero to 10 for a part of the body. Yeah. My left knee, for example, something like that. We want to be very specific. And then look back at the, the days and, and the twice daily ratings of the pain and have a record, you can probably find one online somewhere, of what the barometric pressure was and see if there is a correlation. I have a way better way of doing it. Yeah, it's a better way. Let's find a chamber where we can control the barometric pressure. Bar barometric. That's what I for said. For your right? fibromyalgia. <laughs> barometric pressure. Sorry. Yeah, for my, yeah. All right, now you got me all flustered. Let's put her in there uh, and then change it and then see if she can tell us if it's changing or. That would be another way. Hey. And you may be able to. We don't brilliant, know. Right? The test hasn't been done. Probably not ethic. Ethically. Uh, but looking back, you, you, you have this experience of. Hey, I really feel like um, when the weather changes, I feel different and yeah. it seems to correlate. That could be, or it could be it seems that way and it's very convincing to ourselves. We can convince ourselves of lots of things. Um, so for the benefit of the doubt, we'll say she feels like she can change it. Yeah. Or if she feels like she can feel the change, maybe she can. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to be watching these studies on a lot of people with similar situations. Yeah. And, and uh, so far, the studies aren't backing up what people's experience has been right. saying. So we're, we're a little doubtful of it because so we're, of that. Yeah, we're scientists. We, we rely on studies. But I always data. try not to call somebody's personal experience. No. 
um, yeah, bogus, falsified, or, or yeah, I, I like to to affirm the patient's experience because they gen- legitimately are seeing this correlation and and having the perception yep. that this is what's going on. <laughs> okay, let's get back to some comments here. All right, where 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 do we leave off? Wow, man, we have so many comments. We're not going to keep up with them all. So you're going to have to use the, what's it called? Super, Super chat. chat. Where you do the little dollar sign, and that's going to... How actually, do we have a little thing that comes I should probably up check the bottom? Super Chat. I should probably go through these. Super Chat. Uh, and we can do that. <laughs> with a cool little Okay, so there haven't been any jingle. Super Chats. So in, in absence of the Super Chats, I'm going to go through and, and find some of these that sound <laughs> a little bit more interesting for you guys. Uh, his sibling has osteoarthritis, fibro. I'm, I'm assuming that's short for fibromyalgia. And many, I need to stop doing that. Many problems with my back. When the weather starts getting cold, I get pain in my fingers and increased back pain. So usually we've been talking mm. about knees here. Pamela comes back with Bianca. They're completely removing them. Uh, does RA hide in blood test? You can test for RA, does RA with blood test. Hide tests. in blood test. Um, can there be does false negatives? Is that what you're blood? asking? I don't know if we fully know. understand the question. But there is a, a test for RA. Uh, you can do rheumatoid factor or the more specific CCP. Oh. Um, Here's a good question from Elaine. Loading, mean, In all caps, why do doctors only, and then not all caps, want to focus on one pain site at a time? Why do we want to focus on one pain site at a time? Well, <laughs> It's easier? <laughs> it's easier. <laughs> no, it's just, well, we, well, we could look at, at a patient and say, okay, you hurt in we your to, yeah. shoulder and your knee. Let's not, let's not differentiate the two, and let's just do Think a treatment for both. both. Yeah. And it turns out that they have a tibial plateau fracture in their knee, and they have a um, rotator cuff tear in their shoulder. Well, you're not going to treat those the same way, and it's nope. not going to be correct. You're not going to get them better doing that. Yeah. Now, if you have a patient who says, I hurt all over, right? well, so then that's different. Yeah, so I guess we're just trying to differentiate between systemic problems, which go through the whole body, or uh, focal musculoskeletal complaints. If yeah. it is multiple complaints, uh, then we start to look for a more systemic process. Yeah. But if it is just one, two, you know, three, uh, and, and they're all acting differently, um, then yeah, we want to focus on those individually and make sure there's nothing actually going on at that site that we can treat. You know, if you do have, say, a fracture, we're going to want to treat that, get you, get you an orthopedist. Same thing with a rotator cuff uh, issue. Um, yeah, that's probably the, the biggest reason. We, we want to make sure we don't miss anything, that we can do something quickly and not um, uh, let it go and then turn into a bigger problem. Okay, you know what I just found out? What's that? I found out somebody's trying to get around not using Super Chat to get our attention by using all caps. All caps. So I have, I have a way of um, addressing that. Okay, <laughs> there we go. So now they're not, you're not going to stand out because you use all caps. Um, I thought, didn't we make the joke that you were yelling at us last time? We don't. We don't I don't think it was the same being, person being yelled at. Uh, I think it was somebody else. <laughs> okay, so uh, not using all caps, we have Dijon Leggett, and she says, "Ever since I injured my back and moved to the Midwest, oh one injured my back, two moved to the Midwest. Whenever it gets cold, my back aches more." Hmm. Didn't happen when you weren't in the Midwest. That's interesting. What's different? Do they have different do pressures have, in the Midwest? Interesting. The Midwest has some differences when it comes to do have more. something that seems to be influenced by atmospheric pressure, and that is Tornado Alley. Oh, yeah, that's right. Through the Midwest. Right. Uh, the, the place in the world that has the most tornadoes. And I don't know that they necessarily have more variation in barometric pressure or not. I, I don't I, know if that's the case. We would have to look I, I, I know they have more tornadoes. I don't know. Who's they have the more. meteorologist? Okay. If somebody has a meteorologist, please <laughs> comment and let us know on that one. Please. Is there actually more of a change in atmospheric pressure in Tornado Alley or the Midwest? The Midwest, yeah. and, and when you say Midwest, I'd be curious to know if you actually are in Tornado Alley. i just curious uh, for my own. Right. Uh, I don't know if it means anything necessarily. Uh, she's done physical therapy and steroid injections. What uh, else can I do for relief? I love you, doctors. We love you too, John. Uh, for relief, exercises daily, every single day. Hey, actually, you you recently had yeah, a I, I, I had pain. an episode that lasted for about eight weeks, uh, from Labor Day to, well, halfway between Halloween and Thanksgiving of 
of back pain that was at one point, I would say this, did you see me li crying on the floor of our office that one day? I, I, I left the one. patient I, room. Leanne came in. I did see you. Uh, that was unpleasant. That was very down. unpleasant. Yeah, I, I, I motored through it. And what I found was if I would just keep doing with my daily routine, the pain would get better with being active. And that's what the studies show. They don't show there's a particular exercise that gets you better. Um, physical therapy doesn't necessarily in itself do something that gets you better. What they find is that people who stick with their regular activities and keep going to work and doing what they do and getting up and moving get better quicker than people who don't. Right. And thankfully mine is finally gone with just, you know, taking anti-inflammatories because I was able to because I don't have kidney problems or stomach right. problems. Actually, I did switch from ibuprofen to Aleve because I did that, feel yeah. it in my stomach that one time with 800 milligrams ibuprofen. Not done it since. I've used Aleve starting with two tablets the first dose and thankfully not having Ill, any ill effects. Um, your results may vary. Check with your doctor. <laughs> yes. Oh, we got another one who likes using all caps. <laughs> okay. Uh, Miranda... I am in, okay, Miranda is in Tornado Alley. She actually is. Hey. Okay, so that's answer to one right. of the questions. And curious to know that somebody who feels like uh, they've had this change in pain that may correlate with weather, living in a place that's known for having severe weather that is, you know, brought on by changes or, or it, it seems to correlate with changes in uh, atmospheric pressure. So again, we're still looking for that answer. If somebody looks that up, Lou Googles it yeah. about, is Tornado Alley actually have more variation atmospheric yeah, pressure than the other parts of the world. Oh, look, Audrey's here. Uh, she also has rheumatoid arthritis. She can predict the weather. Hey. Well, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, and Audrey, make sure you watch that SciShow link in the description. I actually put the link in before I made the show. Really cool, huh? Yeah. It should be down here somewhere. Yeah, I see. Uh, yeah, see, there's the link. Hey, there we go. Isn't that cool? Did that for your convenience. Check it out. So we had another one. Uh, oh, the uh, question of does RA hide in tests, what was going on there was does the test for RA, as if there's one single test, right. change from blood test to te uh, blood test or blood draw to blood draw? And the answer is absolutely yes. You can have it be yeah. different from one time to another. And, and what do we check for rheumatoid arthritis when we're checking blood tests? Uh, the spe specific tests are there's rheumatoid factor, which is kind of looking for that uh, autoantibody. Uh, and an even more specific one, anti-CCP. Mm -hmm. um, that's a newer one, uh, not, not routinely used, but uh, is more specific towards rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and then you can check for certain, uh, an autoantibody panel, um, uh, which can also pick up all... Whole panel. Yeah, a whole panel, which can pick up all, all, essentially all types of autoimmune disease, including lupus, thyroid disease, um, primary biliary ear, cirrhosis, all sorts of autoimmune, cool autoimmune diseases. But uh, certain um, autoimmune uh, markers will point more towards rheumatoid arthritis. Um, that is always secondary to exam or looking at you in the office and looking for uh, specific yes. features which would point us more towards uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Um, so we'll let you talk and that's, about a, those. that's a theme that I have not really hit on in our videos as much as I should, and that's that a patient's description or history of what's going on and the physical examination the doctor does on your body oh. is way more important than what a blood test shows. Yes. Uh, blood tests should always be interpreted in light of what the clinical picture is. Did right. you need to go, was that? Uh, oh, yeah, I am on call, so I probably should. Oh, okay, call okay, back. so, but thank you so much for joining us. And yeah. hey, everybody, thank Dr. Gwain for being a part of things Hopefully in the comments. It. Thank him for, because uh, we don't always get to have him as, be a part of things, and we're actually trying to schedule for him. The patrons know this, because they've read about it, that I'm hey. trying to come up with a way to schedule for you to have prep time and video time for videos like this. If you guys like it, please so, do let us comment. know. Let, please let us do know. comment. Uh, and, and and you can comment on his blog too at drgreennight.com. Yeah, check it out. And I, I need to put a link to that in the description of this too. So I'll yep. get to that. So yeah, you go ahead. Cool. I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap up after you leave. Thank you All so right. much again yeah. for for being a part of this. Yeah, <laughs> it is a very low hanging microphone. Yes. Right. Ah. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Dr. Gwen. 
And, and thank you all for joining us. And do watch that SciShow video. Uh, comment on their comments also to tell them that we're doing this so that people, other people reading the comments there know that we have continuing discussion on the subject of the videos on the SciShow video. Let me go ahead and look here and get caught up with comments with you guys. Oh, okay, they are thanking Dr. Gwen. Thank you, Dijon. And love you, Poppy Girl. What do you give a stick neck? Head for two? Okay. So uh, rather than go off uh, down in uh, different rabbit holes that aren't necessarily related to this, this core topic of weather changes predicting pain and osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis, we'll go ahead and wrap it up now. Thank you so much. I'll find a way to uh, keep this going. As far as having videos like this, we want to do them more often. I'd love to be able to do it on a more uh, predictable time frame. right now. It really, I'm sorry, just the way things go in our office, it has to be just when we're able to. So again, thank you so much for being a part of this. Until next time, Dr. Mark Vaughn telling all of you to stay in good health.